Hi, this is Dr. Hayek, and today we will be talking about predicting the mechanism of nucleophilic substitutions reactions. Now you have to keep in mind that two factors are relevant in predicting whether a given reaction is likely to proceed by an SN1 or an SN2 mechanism. These two factors are the nature of the alkyl halide and the strength of the nucleophile. First, we will discuss the effect of the nature of the alkyl halide. For alkyl halides, we have four different types of alkyl halide. We either have the methyl halide, so CH3X, or we have the first degree alkyl halide, and that's the RCH2X, or we have the second degree alkyl halide, which is R2CHX, and the last one is the third degree alkyl halide, which is the R3CX. So therefore here, I will indicate the degrees. So first degree, second degree, and third degree. Now, methyl halide and first degree alkyl halide undergo always SN2 mechanism. However, for a third degree, alkyl halide undergoes SN1 mechanism always. However, for a second degree alkyl halide, it undergoes an SN2 mechanism or an SN1 mechanism. In this case, what we should do for a second degree alkyl halide, we should look at the strength of the nucleophile. The nucleophile, it could be strong nucleophile, or it could be a weak nucleophile. Now, how can we decide if the mechanism will be SN2 or SN1? So if we have a second degree alkyl halide, the strong nucleophile will favor SN2 mechanism and the weak nucleophile will favor SN1 mechanism and therefore if I have a second degree alkyl halide with a strong nucleophile the mechanism will be SN2 however if I have a second degree alkyl halide with a weak nucleophile the mechanism will be SN1 both mechanisms give different product. So here I will consider the product given by SN2. So here is SN2 and here is the product for SN1. For SN2, the product is the result of an inversion of configuration. Of configuration which means the R it becomes S and the S it becomes R or cis becomes trans and the trans becomes cis however for SN1 I have racemization for racemization in case I have one stereogenic center and in this case I get a mixture which means if I have an R I get R and S if I have a cis I get cis and trans and so on SN2 mechanism favors aprotic solvents so aprotic solvents however SN1 mechanism favors protic solvents now, SN2 mechanism favors a protic solvents because the nucleophile is less solvated and therefore the strength of the nucleophile is not affected. However, SN1 favors the protic solvent because it weakens the nucleophile through hydrogen bonding with it. Now, let's take a look on some major differences between SN2 mechanism and SN1 mechanism. First, we will start by listing the kinetics. 
For an SN2 mechanism, the rate law expression is written in function of both concentrations for the alkyl halide and the nucleophile, and therefore it's written like this. However, for an SN1 mechanism, the rate law expression is written in function of the concentration of the alkyl halide only. So, for an SN2 mechanism, the rate is a second order and it's a first order in each concentration. However, for an SN1 mechanism, the rate law is a first order in concentration of the alkyl halide, which means changing the concentration of the nucleophile wouldn't change the rate of the reaction in the case of an SN1 mechanism. However, changing the concentration of any of the reactants, the alkyl halide or the nucleophile in the case of an SN2 mechanism would change the rate of the reaction. For SN2, it's a concerted mechanism and therefore it's from one step. So the bond making and bond breaking happens at the same time. However, the SN1 mechanism, it occurs in two steps. The bond breaking happens first to form the carbocation, then the bond making happens after that. We have said that the SN2 results into an inversion of configuration. However, the SN1 results into racemization, which means it gives a mixture of stereoisomers. Finally, less substituted alkyl halides react faster. However, for SN1 mechanism, more substituted alkyl halides react faster. And this takes us back here where third degree alkyl halide undergoes only SN1. However, methyl halide or first degree alkyl halide undergo only SN2. Thank <music> you.